Welcome to Control Talk Now, your smart buildings podcast with Ken Smyers and Eric Stromquist. Control news you can use. And now, here's your hosts, Ken and Eric. All right, here we go, big dog. Welcome to Control Talk Now for the weekend of March 8th. 2015. This is your host, Eric Stromquist. You are either watching or listening to Control Talk Now, the Smart Building video cast or podcast. I am joined, as usual, by the man they call the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, Kenny Smyers from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But Kenny, you are not in Pittsburgh right now, buddy. Where are you? No, I got up in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, Beautiful country. Uh, Hartford is considered uh, to be the insurance capital of the world. Uh, my daughter works at uh, Travel. She's an actuary. Uh, and uh, just to visit, but uh, a lot of driving. It was a long day yesterday on the road and got here and set things up and we're ready to go. Yeah, buddy. You look, you look, you look a little bush, but it's always great to see the family. And you see your daughter. I know you, you're proud of both of them. But, uh, so she's uh, working in the insurance industry, huh? Indeed she is. Um, so... Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, they've got so much snow up here, it's incredible. Uh, we thought we had a bad in Pittsburgh. Well, Hartford's worse, and Boston's even worse. I mean, uh, it's been an extraordinary uh, winter season, and uh, everybody's real anxious to get it over with. So how about you down in Georgia? How soon? You guys are 75 degrees and, and sunny, right? Well, we were one day this week, and then the next day went down to the 30s. But that's Georgia weather. Again, we can have snow one day and uh, being wearing shorts the next. And uh, it's, it's uh, you know, sunny outside today, Kenny. Uh, it's a little bit on the cold side, probably in the, you know, uh, mid 40s right now. Hadn't really checked the forecast, see what's going on. But, uh, Big Dog, I know you got a lot going on up there. So, what do you say we just cut right to it? Another big week in building automation controls. Uh, let's break down our posts and use that for some talking points. What do you say? Certainly, Eric. Uh, well, first up, we have, uh, we have to Mr. Tim Chambly. Uh, he did an introductory to the VFDs, and uh, Mr. Chambly does a great job. Always does. He has a passion for training, and uh, he really gets the points across because uh, this takes you to what the basics, what VFDs are all about. Uh, he talks about, you know, DC voltage, and he talks about, you know, the, uh, the sign, uh, and he talks about you know the applications, but um, why don't you tell us a little bit about Tim? How how long he's been with Stromquist and, and what his fortes are? Well, Tim's been with us for probably about five years now, Kenny. But I've ta- I've chased Tim around for twenty five years to get him to come to work for us. He's been a Stromquist customer for a lot of years, and I would come in and see Tim on the counter from the very first time I met him. I knew I wanted to work with him. Offered him a job. He said, Nah, you know, I'm good. And then. You know, years ago by, and I'd see him, he'd be with a different company. And then finally, uh, about five years ago, Tim came on board with us. And what a great addition. Tim is, has been uh, the local trainer uh, down uh, at the, uh, you know, at, at the school here, the trade school. So most of the technicians around Georgia know him because they've been trained by him. He's a master on chillers and equipment was really one of the first DDC guys, one of the, the, the first integrators in Atlanta hired Tim, and Tim was actually doing installations, running wires. That was where he got his start. And I won't go through his whole career, Kenny, but he wound up going to train and was over at train for a long time. But Tim can design systems. He's a licensed contractor. Not that he does that anymore, but uh, just a brilliant guy. And, and I, I laughingly say, because Tim is kind of like a... Uh, Tim loves to train. That's his forte. You get him in front of a room full of people, and I'm fond of saying he goes from being Gomer Pyle to Gordon Gecko. He's just like a different person when you get him in front of a room. Now, Tim, he doesn't like the camera, so I sort of have to sneak those in. He, he really doesn't like to be filmed. But uh, these are some older uh, videos that we did about two years ago, and, uh, and we actually posted part two later in the week. But it's you know Tim breaking the, the variable frequencies down really for beginners, but it's a good review for other people, Kenny. Tim has a great way of explaining things, as you can see in these videos. And uh, Tim is a VFD guy extraordinaire, so uh, enjoy. Really good training stuff and uh, part of what Control Trends is all about, Kenny, making sure we have great educational training videos that are accessible, easy to understand, and easy to use. Well, Eric, I can tell you this, that uh, knowing the most uh, watched videos, uh, Tim Chambly enjoys probably the most watched videos for his presentations of all the uh, the library uh, in the Control Trends uh, video library. So uh, he, he must do something very right because he gets a, he's very successful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, buddy. Absolutely. 
And, you know, then, you know, so good stuff there. And we will continue to uh, create and post videos. Uh, the team at Stromquist has really gotten on board with this, the training video thing. We've got several people that are videoing them, from Arsayan Johnson to Mike Bonner and Rob Allen now. So we're going to keep producing uh, video content, but also we curate videos. So, for example, last week you had found some great videos, training videos that Siemens had put together, and we posted those. So if you have a good training video or controls video that would be useful to our community, let us know. We'll post it on Control Trends. Uh, but we also call through you know, hundreds of videos every week that are on YouTube because more and more people are starting to create great content. And why, why should you have to go look everywhere, you know, do a bunch of searches when you go to Control Trends? Because Kenny and I are going to find the best of the best to make sure they get posted. Indeed, Eric. Indeed, Kenny Smyers. All right, Big Dog, what we have up next? Well, next up we have uh, In the Winter Circle with Viconics. Uh, Mr. Patrick Thomas receives the awards. Uh, actually, Viconics and Schneider, uh, with their smart structure, like, uh, won an award with Can to Go. So, I mean... You saw a very, very successful evening for the Schneider Electric family of products. Uh, again, the, the uh, SE8000 one, uh, which was a Schneider Electric. It gets a little confusing because Schneider Electric essentially owns, uh, you know, I think 12 to 14 uh, control companies uh, in our industry. But one of the most popular ones was Viconics and then can to go And uh, the combination of those two product lines have produced uh, award-winning products year in and year out and some of the most successful uh, solutions for, uh, you know, like commercial building solutions, but they also have thermostats that are net workable, so you can put the thermostat in, take care of business, control your equipment, and when the project, uh, you know, permits, you can network all those uh, equipment controllers or uh, room controllers or thermostats together in your, uh, your Niagara uh, network, and uh, so they get an amazing product line, and, and Patrick Dumas, uh, I can tell you this, he is one of the strongest support persons I've ever worked with. I talked to him last week. And it's always reassuring to, to know that you can go to somebody that really understands uh, your applications. Uh, we had an issue involving uh, 0 to 10 volts DC actuators or 2 to 10. And, and he made it very clear that uh, what Viconics did, because a great deal of actuators out there are 2 to 10, uh, the thermostat, the Viconic or the uh, Schneider Electric thermostat ramps up to 2.5 volts DC uh, immediately, almost like a VFD, so they can handle that 2 to 10 uh, you know, control over the, uh, the VAV box. So it's a... Uh, Nice guy, a nice company, and uh, we're very happy for them. Well, absolutely, Kenny. And uh, that's our Seon Johnson interviewing him in the winner's circle. Uh, we got several of those videos up there. A lot of the people didn't go. The process was that, you know, you come up, we video you getting your award. Uh, we hope we videoed you on the red carpet. And then if you were lucky enough to win, uh, you had the opportunity to go get interviewed by Mr. Seon Johnson in the winner's circle. And, uh, you know, hey, if you're going to have a Hollywood-type night, you got to have... Lots and lots of cameras and lots and lots of interviews. So uh, Patrick was there. The can to go product, Kenny, is, is one of the wireless product solution of the year, and I think deservedly so. You've worked with them a bit. It, it, it's, it's a newer product. It uses a lot of wireless technology. Uh, it's a control system, if you will, that uses NOcean as well as Zigbee, I believe, Kenny. So okay. you can essentially put a system in and not really have to run wires to it other than to power your controllers and, and your, your valves and actuators. So it's a cool system. It, it works off of something called the CAN bus. And it, uh, is, was it called the CAN bus? Kenny, I forget, but it's... It's, it's, it's CAN, CAN bus, bus, yes. It's mm -hmm. CAN bus. And that's real big, what, in the gaming industry and, and, and some... Uh, well, actually, the, uh, in the auto automation industry, it's used on cars, vehicles. Uh, it's used in airplanes. So it's a very robust, uh, you know, and very... Uh, uh, very well established. In fact, Canbus took over for the, um, for uh, what do you call it? Uh, you have Modbus, uh, Schneider, uh, or the predecessors owned Modbus and then gave it to the industry in 2002 and then and has developed Canbus. Uh, so, also uh, just an incredible, uh, you know, uh, successful, low cost, but powerful network. So, the Canbus is being used uh, more and more. Um, in fact, KMC uses the Canbus on their new stuff. So, um, and it's open source, so it's a, it's a great uh, network. Good stuff there, and Snyder Electric is one of the giants in the industry, right up there with the Honeywells and Johnsons and Siemens. So uh, it's great to watch the technology sort of uh, technology and technology sort of leapfrog each other, Kenny. And, and Snyder with the can to go is uh, right in right in that hunt, if you will. So congratulations to Patrick and the team at Viconics and Snyder Electric. 
Hi, big dog. Next up was uh, what you and I are thinking might be a very disruptive technology, very good technology. Talk about the interview you did with Daikin at the AHR show, if you would. It was very exciting, Eric. And like you said, uh, we, 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 one of our trends is, is to copy, or no, I'm sorry, to follow and, and basically uh, communicate to the control trends community what disruptive technology looks like, feels like, and sounds like. And Daikin is the first uh, HVAC industry uh, equipment manufacturer to put IoT on their equipment on the rooftop. And we were very fortunate to catch up with Mr. Paul Rocker, who is the Vice President of Systems and Controls for Daikin Applied. And uh, boy, these guys are, are sharp, but they're so excited about what they're doing. Um, instead of taking information on equipment and pushing it down into the building onto the networks and then have it work its thing, you know, the information be uh, processed, aggregated, and you know, resolving control strategies, energy strategies, what, you know, whatever, these guys are taking the information and pushing it up into the cloud. In other words, the dynamic uh, variable here is that it's not being uh, integrated inward, it's being pushed outward. So, and it can also take information from within the building and, and uh, you know, send it to the cloud. So what you're seeing here is the first time where equipment talks to the building instead of the building talking to the equipment. So the equipment's up on the roof, uh, they have the ability to connect to the web in various ways. They can take the Ethernet and go back into the network. Uh, they can use the uh, 3G or 4G, you know, the cellular connection, uh, and then of course wireless. But the, the, the thing is, is that the machine to machine concept is really bearing fruit now. So you can actually have the Daikin equipment on the rooftop connected to the web, uh, getting feeds on weather information and updates, and using that information to strategize the optimal equipment runs and tell the building management system, hey, we know the weather is going to get really hot or really cold, therefore we're going to preheat or pre-cool the building and uh, maximize operational and savings, energy savings for the building owner. So it's a really, really interesting, uh, game-changing concept. Well, and let's talk about why it might be game-changing. Because uh, first of all, they're partnering with both Intel and Dell. And as you know, if you follow Control Talk and Control Trends, uh, one of the big uh, issues has been internet security. And, and Paul was uh, quite adamant in discussing their solution for that. They're working with uh, Intel. Intel already has their... Um, uh, their security into the chip and down right, 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 down right, right, yes. uh-huh. their stack, their uh, the Maccabee stack, I think it was. But uh, with is it Wind River? They're working with one of those. Companies. Right, Wind River and Maccabee. Uh, so and that uh, and, and then Intel. So yeah, they really throw it together. Security stack built into the equipment, so they're very aware of the impact of internet security and cyber hacking through the BAS system. So that's that's a big thing. My question, Kenny, and and if you look at the video, you can see where are the controls right I mean right well the, the controls are in the the, the the two controls that are matter are inside the equipment already uh, Dell, Dell uh, I'm sorry Intel has made an intelligent gateway that takes that the 4,000 points up into the uh, internet and like you said Intel has that stack they have the McAfee uh, security so they're encoding uh, and decoding or encrypting and decrypting and then they also have the Wind River, so it's uh, very, very fast and formidable. So, uh, well, my point being, Kenny Smyers, because we looked at the demo, right? I didn't see anything from Viconics or Snyder Electric. I didn't hear it, see anything from KMC or Link Spring or Honeywell or Johnson or Siemens. Um, I think if I'm an integrator, this might concern me a little bit, just simply because you don't have the controls there. And as near as we could tell, Kenny, they made it so simple that, uh, I, you know, I, I, th- I think that's part of the appeal here is that you can put these units up on the rooftop, run, run, run a Cat 5 to them, and you're up and you're running. You've got control, you got access to the data, and like you said, the, the, the theme of the unit pushing the data out and the smarts being right there at the edge. So how is that going to affect our industry, do you think? I think it's going to make a major impact. Uh, you know, everything's kind of time sensitive. I don't think it's going to happen overnight, but I think the whole concept is going to make everybody uh, reconsider where they're at in this this changing environment. You know, this, this evolution, this progression towards you know optimizing and reducing duplicities. So uh, the uh, building owners uh, who ultimately are then you know they decide who's going to do what and who's going to put what where. 
can now opt out of, uh, instead of running everything through their systems integration and relying on those folks to aggregate the information and control things, they can basically third party that out into the cloud. But somebody's going to have to process that information somewhere. Somebody's going to control the, uh, you know, making the, the decisions and, and um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, you know, uh, I think if you're a Dyke and Deal, you're smiling because you're sitting on top of, uh, you know, probably the next major, uh, you know, leapfrog forward on technology being applied to the HVAC industry in its most basic sense. You know, it's going to go down to, like you say, the edge devices are going to get smarter and the smarts, where that smart is going to be pointed to into a network inside the building and, and run through those strategies and those control loops or whatever, or is it actually going to go and operate on operate outside of that network you know like you said security being the issue so you don't need to uh, get on the person's uh, you know it you don't have to disturb their their it environment because you're going to take it right up into the internet and, and and it's a secured environment already so i think it's going to be a big game changer i just don't know the time how, how time how quickly you can implement something like this and how quickly the adoption rates you know you'll have certain people that will adopt it you'll have early movers and you'll, you'll go through the same cycle or anything else does but it's going to have its uh, share of the market. Well, I got to tell you, Kenny and Dyke, and what a company those guys are. I tell you what, I would love to rep those guys. They are all over it. So, another story regarding Dyke and I, um, you know, as you know, I moved into a new house. We have an unfinished basement. Uh, I'm going to get it finished out down there and have, uh, you know, a playroom for the kids, but mainly to have uh, the, the studio for a control talk now. So, needless to say, Completely unfinished basement, so I'm thinking zoning. So we have the general contractor over. They bring the residential HVAC contractors going to do the installation, and we bring the aforementioned Mr. Tim Chambly over. And I'm bringing Tim over because I'm thinking this is a perfect application for zoning, right? And, you know, obviously Honeywell's got a great zoning system. And we get to talking, and the solution, they're talking about zoning, but they say, if you really want to do this thing right, get the most energy efficient, what you do is you put three mini splits in here. And I get those are just sort of self-contained units that, uh, they, that install very, very easily. They're very energy efficient, but, but from a residential standpoint, that is zoning at its best. In other words, Tim was explaining, you know, that, that zoning, if it's not set up right, can create problems. And obviously, with us control, uh, recording the show, the last thing I want to have down there is, is, is a lot of noise. Well, these things are virtually silent uh, you can't hear them they're very very energy efficient much more energy efficient than a zoning system now they don't necessarily make sense in a retrofit situation Tim I mean uh, uh, Kenny but in a uh, 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 new construction they totally do and so I said okay who makes the best one of these the bet Daikin so Daikin's it so I'm going to have three Daikin mini splits down in the basement doing the control and the humidification and all that so, you know, I made an interesting statement there, which is they're not really good for retrofit. Uh, you're better off doing a zoning system for retrofit, but they are ideal for new construction. Sort of like the equipment we're talking about right now, and you, you mentioned the adoption rate. So, yeah, it might, it might not be instantaneous. You might not have a lot of people, you know, the retrofit market might still be more conducive to our way of doing things, but, you know, Five, ten years of new construction, that retrofit market begins to dry up because I don't think anybody's going to retrofit a dike and mini split system with a traditional commercial zoning system. The cost to go back would be just way too much. And I'm not so sure that if this works the way it appears it's going to work, anybody's going to go backwards off of uh, you know, a Daikin unit that has these, these controls and this access installed in it. So interesting times, Kenny. In our industry, for sure. But hey, if you're a listener out there, you know, you, you know more about you know you know about this stuff. Love to hear what you have to think in comments. Uh, Kenny and I are trying to really track this trend. Uh, you know, great new technologies coming in, but it seems like the piece of the control pie seems to be a piece that everybody's you know trying to take. Kenny and, and people are taking bits and pieces every day. Well, there you're right. And uh, but one thing to go back with Tyken, they can go back eight years into their equipment line yeah. and retrofit and That's upgrade, right. you know, and bring that intelligence to existing Tyken units. So there's a tremendous market there, like you said, for new uh, installations. But they can also go back to the Daikin family of uh, equipment. And it's not just going to be, right now it's uh, the Rebel Rooftop Rocks, but uh, they also have a, a whole line of, uh, you know, chillers and, and many, you know, they can go back eight years and, and then upgrade those and put this intelligence into that equipment. So that looks like a pretty exciting market for Daikin. Um, 
What, what, what it does, Kenny, and I got to tell you, if you are a controls distributor, building automation controls distributor like you and me and, and a lot of our buddies, uh, you might begin to look down the street at your refrigeration wholesaler because he might be your competitor. If you are a full bone systems integrator, you might start looking at the, the residential and light commercial contractor because those guys are probably going to be coming into the market with these new products. So keep us posted. I mean, Kenny and I might be overreacting a little bit. If we are, please let us know in comments. We would love for somebody to explain to us why we're overreacting. This is not a real issue. Well, it's just such a large market and the markets are stratified and people don't have uh, and people have different economic worlds and realities and some people are building new stuff some people have to make uh, patchwork to existing equipment to make it go and the last thing they can afford to do is uh, you know take advantage of this even though this might be the uh, latest and greatest uh, things get phased into place and I, I think you've got uh, we have some more posts coming up here that, that will come and collide exactly with this with this new Daikin equipment because they've got another uh, idea that's just as formidable and it doesn't involve uh, major uh, equipment retrofits. It takes existing equipment and existing uh, your infrastructure and it makes it more uh, energy efficient and operationally efficient and, and that takes us, uh, transitions us right into the next post which is introducing the, uh, the KMC new line of BAS controllers, uh, Meet the Conquest. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, your thoughts on, on KMC's version of how they can make your building, your envelope, uh, so much more efficient and so much uh, e more easier to control. Well, Kenny, we've talked about it the last couple weeks on the show. KMC came in about two and a half, three weeks ago. They brought their entire team in, uh, executive team from the CEO on down, and they, they presented their different uh, products and the new product portfolio they're coming up with. And, Kenny, I tell you what, they, uh, they're rocking and rolling. The uh, simple VAV, we call it the every man's VAV control because you don't need a computer to set it up. And our Tim Chambly is uh, all over that. He teaches a pneumatic VAV class, and now he's starting to show people that have no concept of DDC how easy it is to retrofit a pneumatic with the simple VAV. And that in and of itself, Kenny, is a really cool feature, but now Delta has revamped. I mean, I'm sorry, not Delta. KMC has revamped their product line, they're coming up with a Conquest line of controllers, which are fully programmable. So they have a VAV controller that's in there, they have a plant controller, they have uh, a, uh, an air handling unit controller. And some of the technologies, Kenny, right, with, we mentioned this last week with the VAV controller, and Eric Kruder talks about this in the video that we posted, is uh, they're using near-field communication. So if you've got a smartphone, you can uh, configure your you know, one through 100 or one through 250 VAV controls, if you will, and you can just go to the boxes before you even take them out of the box. You can just touch them with the top of your smartphone and it will configure your controller without power, not even out of the box. So that in and of itself is a cool feature. So KMC seems to really be dialing in, Kenny, to uh, very competitive price points, very, very easy installation and flexible control. So uh, that, that system includes uh, a little a little front end they have that's apparently scalable, Kenny, and, and Eric Kruder was telling me that uh, some of their dealers right now, that it's so price competitive. We, we talked last week about the 7 million plus buildings that are too small for energy management, and this is an area that KMC is focused on. We call it the race to the small space. And they're offering a solution, Kenny, that their dealers are able to go in and say, hey, give us a, a three or five year contract. We'll give you the system for free. So you'll be able to enjoy the benefits of having a, a building automation control system. All that brings in in terms of analytics, in terms of control, in terms of remote monitoring. We'll give you that for, uh, like I say, a three to five year service contract. So they have really got an interesting mix. All this is coming out. We'll keep reporting on it. Uh, but uh, KMC just seems to be in the mix in a big time way, Kenny. That uh, uh, I, that they just might they might be the winner to the of the race to the small space. I don't know. Well, they're going to get their share. Eric, you brought up like three really good points. One is that everybody wants to have a more efficient uh, building envelope and equipment control their equipment and have better operational controls. But the financing's hard. So if you can help solve that puzzle by bringing uh, you know very uh, you know down to earth, easy to understand financing. 
almost like the energy service providers provide, you know, at the federal level and the state level, you know, and they're sanctioned. And you're allowed to, if you can prove that you can, uh, you know, put this in and avoid capital, avoid, you know, avoidance, capital avoidance uh, projects where you can share savings and you can prove the savings and you, and you do that, then who's not going to go for that? So it's a great concept of how you can come up with financial solutions. Two, simply VAV was, was like you said, every man's VAV. It didn't require front end computers or whatever. But what this new one does is these advanced application controllers give you uh, the additional benefits of not just RS-232, but they have the Ethernet and uh, they, they give you a lot more uh, options to take you on that scalable thing you were talking about. The, the, you know, the race in a small space, which could be a uh, you know, 2,500 square feet to all the way up to, you know, 100,000 square feet, do it modularly and, and make sense because they, they add uh, all kinds of neat features uh, that include the Conquest, the Connect Light, which is that software you were talking about, uh, you know, the, uh, the information that they can get now within the network and the system is incredible, but um, they have thermostats that are smart, you know, they, they introduce not just the controllers, but they also got, you know, sensors where they've got, uh, they have an incredible sensor. Tell us about that sensor. It has uh, Humidity, temperature, uh, you know, CO2, and it's all one unit. So they have four ones. So they have occupancy, temperature, humidity, and CO2, and the user interface is totally customizable. So you can do single or multiple set points. You can control so many uh, VAVs from one sensor using their uh, input, you know, their module that you add to that, so they can control six VAVs. With one with one temperature uh, sensor, you know, so uh, or one 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 I'm sorry sensor controller. So uh, it's just that's really smart thinking. That's that's just well, it yeah, just keeps it, getting better. Yeah, it is, and it's hard not to pull from these guys, Kenny. The third generation Eric Cruder is the grandson of Ken Cruder, the uh, founder of KFC Controls. It's hard not to pull for these guys. You know, they're uh, uh, out of Indiana. Uh, I you know. Uh, uh, you know, an American company, an American success story that with, with all the competition going on globally, these guys find a way to be extremely innovative and come out with very price competitive products and, and, and really unique solutions. So KMC, they won the uh, Simply VAV, won the VAV Controller of the Year at the 2014 Control Trends Awards. These guys are on the move, Kenny, and we'll keep tracking them. We handle them. I think you guys are going to be handling them. I know a lot of the other guys that are sort of in our peer group are handling them, from Scott Cochran to John Donahue and some of the others. So I think you're just going to see KMC really uh, take more market share. And uh, Well, Eric, you know, that brings up another good point, is it's not just the existing market share. They're growing the markets. In other words, there were markets that weren't, uh, they weren't they weren't saturated. They were, nobody had contact with those markets because they didn't have all the uh, the interesting features that this new KMC product line has, and that is the financing element. There's people out there that need our assistance. They need an intelligent, uh, you know, approach towards solving energy uh, crisis. And some of these facilities, you know, you've, you have all different levels of whole stratification markets. With some of these people, they, they, they're growing the market because they can now access areas that they couldn't access before because it just wasn't a fit. You know, so having all that kind of a uh, having kind of a flexibility to go into anywhere and say we can just put thermostats on here, we can put you know simply VAV, and then we can take this and we can make it into a very uh, you know important uh, control system that's remote monitored and controlled, and then we can start uh, optimizing our strategies, you know, and putting smart meters in and connecting everything together. So it all begins somewhere, and I think what they do. Uh, by coming up with this, this line here is they create a whole new bunch of starting points for different potential customers, thus increasing the market and not just trying to fight over that little slice of a pie that already exists. Well, the co it looks like, you know, we, we've been tracking the race to the small space, Kenny. We, we've talked about companies like EasyIO with the Beast being a very economical solution that can, can put things up. You have InTouch, uh, several of the thermostat brands, InTouch, it could be, it could be uh, Honeywell Redlink, just to name a few, all those people are taking thermostats that you're able to access remotely and do things. Uh, in touch, add some additional relays on there, but uh, but none of them, the, the, with the exception of maybe Easy IO, which is is a true DDC controller, uh, sort of have all the functionality that you'll be able to get out of this KMC uh, a product for. And I haven't seen the pricing, Kenny, but from what they're telling me, it sounds like for about the same price. So. It's, it's going to be interesting. We'll keep you guys posted on that. i got more videos, Kenny, that we'll be posting over the next couple of weeks from KMC's pilgrimage to Atlanta. So 
we'll keep the community informed about that. But uh, hey, if you've worked with KMC, uh, pros or cons about it, please let us know in comments. Uh, but again, I think it could be very disruptive to the world as we know it. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see. And speaking of that, Kenny, let's let's, let's get down to uh, another cel- celebratory type. Uh, you like that word celebratory? It's kind of like collaboratory, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got a bunch of toys there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Delta controls. Uh, you talk about uh, you talk about somebody's just been doing something uh, for a long time, right? And we kind of you know happen upon it and really get to open up the envelope and see what's all going on. And uh, you know, began with Una DeBoer's, uh, you know coming to us and saying, hey, what's going on? How come uh, How come you never come over to us and talk to us? And I think it was our inclination. We didn't have a direct relationship with uh, Delta Patrols because they, they have a different channel. So we didn't, we didn't know much about them simply because they were a competitor to uh, you know, our brands. But uh, the more we got to, to see it, and uh, you know, they do it right. And uh, Owner DeVore just put a nice article on LinkedIn uh, in her group explaining what do it right means with a long-term employee that uh, they literally ha- espouse those values and they live it and they work it and they believe in it. But they... Uh, that's their their uh, their their mantra is do it right, you know, don't do it all, at all. Because, uh, but uh, I think this was you talk about celebration. I think the Control Trends Awards really and truly opens up the eyes, not only our eyes but the Control Trends community eyes. And uh, we got to see uh, Mr. Nichols receive the award on behalf of Delta. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, it's a great company. They got great products, and uh, it was a truly momentous event. Did you think? Well, the thing that sucks about Delta Controls, Kenny, <laughs> is it. They don't go through distribution because they are they are a formidable company. And I got to tell you, dude, I am a big, big, big Una DeBoer fan. I think she rocks, Kenny. I mean, the, we've t- told this story before on Control Trends, but Kenny and I are uh, at, it was, uh, was it Niagara Summit or was it uh, Realcom Ibicon? Uh, Real, Realcom Ibicon. Yeah, Realcom Ibicon. We got our cameras. We're going from boot to boot interviewing people. And this woman comes up and goes, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> and I said, well, he's the man, the myth, the legend, and I'm just carrying his camera for him. And she said, well, what do, what do you do, man, myth, the legend? And Kenny said, well, you know, we're interviewing different people. And she goes, well, come over and interview us. We, 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 we got some stuff that rocks there. So we came. That's how we met Delta and Copper Tree Analytics. But uh, Kenny, she's a bright, bright, bright woman and uh, have a lot of respect for the way she rolls and what she does. Like I said, I'm a big Una DeBoer fan. I think if you're looking for, uh, you know, how to do marketing right, I think Una is somebody that you ought to do a case study on because she is really, really uh, active. She's on top of it. She's fair. She's tough. But, uh, you know, I, I like working with her. I don't know about you. Oh, certainly. And, uh, you know, I, th- I think, too, the other thing she brought it was the social media. She knew a, a lot about uh, the control trends because of the, the, the way that she was bumping into it. Everywhere she turned around, she was seeing control trends and she was hearing what we had to say. And, and she wanted to know why that our light didn't shine wide enough and bright enough in different parts of the, uh, you know, the industry. And, and number one, they're a Canadian company. And that's where I think that was like the third Canadian company in a row that we met that was just awe-inspiring. You know, you had uh, Neptronic, you know, you had uh, Distech, you had Delta. And you're thinking, wow. And then all the security and fire um, alarm systems that come out of Canada, they really do produce a lot of really great products and have a lot of great people. And they do a lot of things right up there. And it's coming to the North American market. And we are enriched by the uh, product lines that these folks provide. So uh, she made that very clear to us. And, and she does embrace social media. So, I mean, she was killing, she was hitting us in about three or four of our control trend sweet spots. You know, one, one about, you know, how, how important social media was and how you, you use these channels now to, to excite your networks and, and get people involved. And I think that led to the success of ultimately being, you know, winning the uh, building automation control system of the year. Well, they do. You know, and my friends and customers ask me, they say, you guys don't handle Delta. We compete with Delta. How come you guys are giving on control trends, giving Delta, you know, uh, any visibility at all? Same with Distech, same with everybody else. Well, you know, the awards wouldn't be fair if Kenny and I pick the winners, which we don't. So the votes are the votes. So again, you look at someone like Delta, if they win that award, Kenny, it's because they won it fair and square. And, uh, you know, I have to admire them. And and one of the beautiful things about Control Trends, Kenny, is we get to know a lot of people like Una, the folks at Delta, Distech, that we otherwise would have no contact with at all. So to, to me, Kenny, this is one of the really beautiful things about Control Trends and the Control Trends Awards is 
that they're just great people in our industry, and it's, uh, it's a competitive industry. I think the competition makes everybody better. The ultimate winners are the contractors and the end users at the end of the day. So uh, it's, yeah, what can I say? Congratulations, Delta Controls, and congratulations to all our winners there. And, and you know, if you want to do better next year, you know, one of the things that you mentioned, Kenny, that Una did really, really well, it, you know, she came up to us, she found out about the award, she decided that they would become a sponsor, which totally wasn't necessary. But then she said, how can I maximize our exposure? And, you know, she made sure that, that uh, she energized her network. They made sure to get people to come on Control Trends so that, uh, that they could energize the Control Trends network, which is a key piece because if it's just your network, you're probably not going to win. And they stayed on top of it. So Una took it seriously and, and got it done. And, and that doesn't take any way, anything away from the product because I think it's just a fantastic product. Wasn't a great product. It wouldn't matter what Una was doing people would have voted for it. So, again, I, I think it's a great case study for our other participants who sort of want to know how can I be successful in Control Trends and the Control Trends Awards. Call Una up and ask her. Does she know? Well, uh, well Eric, we've got two more posts left. Uh, the second one is your uh, second post on Tim Chambly. Yep. And Tim just follows right up where he left with part one, so be sure to check that out. And... Uh, Remember, Tim Chambly is the guy that goes from being Gomer Powell to Gordon Gecko as soon as he walks in front of the room. <laughs> Who's Gordon Gecko again? He's the guy from Wall Street, man. Don't you remember? I'm Michael teasing. You. I'm yeah. teasing. You. Michael Douglas. Who could forget Gordon Gecko? Yeah, I, uh, nice, I I just great, uh, making sure lunch, uh, everybody lunches for wimps. And uh, hey, and this business is doggy. This business is cutthroat. If you need a friend, get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic line, huh? There were a ton of them in them. It was one of my all-time favorite movies. I tell you, Michael Douglas just was awesome in that role. So he reminds me a little bit of Mark Peacock, our friend Mark Peacock from Link's Friend, because Mark sort of has that cool factor about him. And I think, you know, he looked at us and said, lunch is for webs. <laughs> All right, that brings uh, uh, just to uh, clear the palette there, lunch palette. We'll, we'll keep... We have a, a new participant in the uh, Control Trends community that uh, has been around a while, but uh, again, uh, it, it's an interesting uh, perspective how uh, the community uh, increases every week, every month, every year. Uh, and then we have, uh, we have a company called Sierra Monitor Corporation out of California, Milpitas, California. And um, they are the manufacturers and providers of uh, many, many products and services. And uh, I'll give you the first uh, introduction to them because um, now they're a part of the control trends community. Uh, we're very excited about uh, now the the products they have are, are of interest to us as distributors. They're of interest to our contractors. They primarily were in an industrial automation market, and again, it was a very uh, logical lateral movement into the building management and building automation space uh, markets. So. Uh, I can tell you what the, they're all about from the, uh, the field server back that router. That's probably their lead product of interest to our community. But what's your thoughts on Sierra monitoring? Well, again, a really cool, innovative company, Kenny. And we talk about social media. I don't know about you, but LinkedIn really seems to be rising to the forefront, I think, in our industry. And, and Sierra reached out to us. The CEO reached out to, to us through LinkedIn. And uh, I guess he'd been following Control Trends, wanted to know what it was about. So we got to talking to them a bit, and I think we got some really exciting coming up with Sierra Monitor. We won't let the cat out of the bag just yet. But, you know, I can just say from a marketing perspective, I can tell you I'm very impressed with how these guys think. Uh, they remind me a lot of Una DeBoer, who we just spoke about, in terms of, you know, really realizing that you got to have your own marketing collateral, your own way to touch your network directly. But to be really successful, you need sort of a third-party uh, avenues or some of like control trends that can also help, you know, get your message out and also reach people that maybe are not in your network already, but uh, really impressed with the way they think, Kenny. And again, we got some great stuff coming from Sierra Monitor, but uh, yeah, talk a bit more about their products because they, it's once we started to go, went to the website, started looking at their products, again, this might be one of the best kept secrets out there, right? Well, you know, it's, it's some style, to begin to put the, the answer to that or, or respond to it is that they were locally very big. They're in the, um, 
you know, in, in California in the uh, Silicon Valley area, and they, they catered to that market at first. So they, they did a lot of things. They, they do uh, they do industrial uh, gas uh, detection. Uh, you know, they do uh, uh, protocols and gateways, fire gas protection. Uh, you know, Century IT solutions provide uh, and protect facilities and personnel. They have field ser uh, server connects assets and facilities for monitoring power. But that's where I think they, they stunned me was their protocol gateways. They actually have protocols. They have 145 protocols that they, that they can integrate, integrate and communicate with, which is extraordinary if you think about it. So uh, if you go on their website, which is uh, you know, www.sierramonitor.com, uh, you see the, uh, just an amazing array of protocol gateways, routers, products, and solutions. Um, these guys are really loaded for bear. They have a ton of great products and, and I think uh, as, as uh, you know, they have field service for OEMs but uh, what we would see them happen is they have a, a, a router, their standard router has two RS-45 ports, two yeah. RS-232 ports. So I mean they're ready to go for a complete backnet internet working solution for any backnet IP, any backnet ethernet or backnet MST uh, application. Uh, they're very, very excited about the, having a, a standalone backnet router that has been certified by the BTL uh, to ensure the highest standard for backnet integrations. The, um, just the features and benefits of just the router alone are something that uh, I think a lot of our, integrate, our integration communities are going to get involved with because they're going to want to know if they can buy one device and, and put that much, uh, leverage that much uh, you know, connectivity in one router, it's going to be a very serious uh, you know, router uh, we're going to see people going from uh, you know, some of the standard routers they're using to the Sierra Monitor router. Yeah, we did a price comparison, Kenny, between you know some of the, the more traditional solutions that, that we handle and most people handle, and most people systems integrators are familiar with, and the Sierra. And I tell you what, if you need you know more than one 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 line, the Sierra is definitely the price competitive option. There, there. Uh, our Mike Bonner is going to do an unboxing video, I think, of that product, and he'll be breaking it down and doing a product review. So stay tuned for that. But uh, hey, we're really happy to have Sierra on board, and uh, we'll be hearing a lot from those guys in the very near future. Kenny Smyers. Right. So what we have uh, the, the last post uh, for this week's Control Talk now is a Sierra Marjorie, just kind of you know the boilerplate feature benefit with a video, uh, about a three and a half minute video. Uh, that'll be the first uh, introduction to Sierra Monitor. Cool. All right, Kenny Smyers. So I know you're up in Connecticut, big dog, uh, in a hotel room. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at your picture here. We might just have one handsome shot of you all week. I can't tell until I actually look at the tape. No, no, no. I'd say I'm beat up. You're right. I drove uh, about a lot. We drove a bunch, about half a day yesterday, and uh, we, we talk, got a lot of comments, but now we're in the cradle of uh, fun, and we're going to go see a play this afternoon. Nice. Uh, but the weather, I'll tell you, man, it's, this has got to be the toughest winter that I can remember for quite some this time. global warming, Kenny. You know, that's the deal, man. I tell you what, that Al Gore was right, man. I mean, everything just is getting, everything's melting, right? I mean, you got to figure those ice caps got re, uh, re-frozen this year, I'm guessing, huh? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, what we'll do is uh, when we have our, uh, when we escape uh, and go outside, uh, you know, outside the box and we talk, talk about something, we talk about that wobbling that occurs when we're at the, uh, the furthest point in our orbit where uh, Jupiter and uh, Saturn are pulling on our little Earth here and trying to knock us out of our, our gravitational orbit with the sun because that's what probably has more impact with our weather than anything we're doing. But uh, I think it's good. That I'm, a, I'm a great person. Wouldn't it be a bitch if those two planets got their act together, pulled us out of our orbit, and we just all of a sudden spun out? into outer space someplace. I mean, and here I am worried about whether I'm getting fat or not. I mean, come on, man. we got we to we stay serious with this stuff. Hey, speaking of serious, Kenny, uh, we would be getting ready to go to London here. Uh, and for those of our listeners who might not know, my wife Anna is due any day now with uh, our son. So uh, otherwise, we would be heading to London for the, uh, the European conference with Tritium. I think they got a lot of exciting stuff coming up there, Kenny. So we'll get a report from... Uh, London and all that, our friend Jenny Graves, uh, once we find out what's going on with that. But uh, I think that's going to be a great conference. If you're one of our listeners over in Europe, you might want to check that out because that will be a great, great uh, conference. And then later in the month, uh, down in Orlando, Florida, Johnson Controls has their business conference we've talked about. And our Rob Allen will be down there as well as Mike Bonner. Uh, Kenny and I are going to set that one out again for the, the reason I mentioned before. Uh, 
but Mike and Rob are going to have cameras, so say hi to those guys. Rob Allen is one of the original Young Guns County. He thinks we're long-winded. Takes us about 45 minutes to an hour to say what we need to say. Rob says it in seven minutes or less, or so he says. So uh, he always goes over, Erica. He said seven. He was eleven. He said seven. He was eight minutes. We're we're gonna we're gonna give him some feedback on and some some blowback on, on his comments saying we're long winded. But yeah. I think we are. But we're trying to do a little bit more. I uh, just just for clarification, the Niagara Forum is uh, going to be April nineteenth and nineteenth through the twenty first of April, and we know that it's dr attracting a lot of attention. In fact, I talked to Luis Malgaras from Neptronic, and they're excited because they're gonna go over uh, and and they're displaying at that. Uh, the Niagara Forum, so uh, open for in innovation, and uh, they're going to be really diving deep into Niagara Fort, which everybody's very excited about. You know, we have a lot of integrators here that they want to be, uh, they want to get that second round of uh, beta testing so they can find kick the tires and see how those new features and benefits are going to, you know, impact their uh, their applications and their customers' projects. You know, Kenny, I, I, I had to was able to spend some time with one of the integrators that's doing a lot of that beta testing for Niagara uh, last week. And this guy, uh, you know, self-admittedly is, is somebody that's always a bit skeptical, so he's a great beta tester, and, and he is, he's pretty impressed with what they're coming out with. So he didn't go into a lot of details, Kenny, but he says he, he really thinks they're on to something there. So uh, I think Niagara's on the right track with that. Well, yeah, and they just introduced some training. Uh, Niagara, uh, Trinity, was gonna have, Trinity University now has it on their schedule, uh, and they've sent out uh, a couple of emails uh, to test uh, the, the waters and see how many people. This new white space thing is really uh, DCIM, uh, you know, uh, the whole way that you approach the markets. Uh, they've teamed up with some really, really talented people in the uh, the data management space, uh, the infrastructure, and uh, they've got the, the Geist folks, uh, really, really big Niagara fans. They were out at Niagara 4. Uh, or Niagara Summit 2014 in Las Vegas. Uh, I think it was the first introduction to a lot of people, but they've got some really big plans on how to control that and how to really manage that space effectively. There's some new technologies and there's some new understandings on how to optimize that whole, uh, you know, that whole application. And it includes, uh, I, I was just checking some things out, but that thermal uh, imaging and stratification, you know, how you know, they're putting cold air into the, the racks space and they've got to exhaust that, the hot air out and to do that optimally can save a lot of money. Well, Kenny, let me ask you, who is Geist? Uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I've bumped into them and I've checked their, their website out. They are, uh, you know, they are wizards in the data center infrastructure management, DCIM. Uh, they've wrote the book on it. I mean, there's an industry that we're now, just like with control trends, how we, we learn about something and it becomes a trend. We right. snag it, we learn about it, and then we benefit. And then we decide, you know, it's like uh, you, have, you play uh, cards and you can only handle so many cards in your hand at any given time. You have to discard one and take on a new one right. to improve your hand. Well, this this now could be a market where you have the Niagara network out there and you can just do so much more of it. It's like, um, it's like uh, Mr. DeCosmo said, Nina says, you know, once you put this talent, uh, you put these formidable tools and talented hands, innovation occurs in directions that you could have never uh, perceived or, or, or predicted. And, and, and that's where it's going because now that you have this great product and you have these talented integrators, they just need to push the, the, the talent cannon into a new market and be successful. And one of those markets that they're planning to do that in is the white space, the data centers. And now it's starting yeah, to make sense to me. I think that's just, I think that's a frontier right there. You and I did a post, uh, I think it was at the first of the year about trends for 2015. And, and I forget the guy who did it, but he was talking about how, and, and I might not have the numbers a hundred percent accurate, but, but they're, I think they're close that if you raise the temperature in a data center by one degree, that could equate to 25 to 30 percent energy savings just by raising it one degree. And apparently, ASHRAE or some of those standards people have said, yeah, you can do that. But he was saying that a lot of people are not doing it just because the risk of damage in the equipment is so high, even though the equipment manufacturers are all saying, yeah, we can, t we can tolerate a little bit higher temperature. It sounds to me like Maybe this is a big maybe. We're doing conjecture now. We won't know until after uh, this is uh, until after Niagara makes any announcements if they do. So this is just speculation on mine and Kenny's part. Uh, but could you imagine uh, them doing some sort of a reset or something and, and, and controlling those racks in a way and making that data available in such a way that that owners are comfortable going, yeah, we can. Um, we feel comfortable now 
letting our temperature rise a degree or a degree and a half because we feel comfortable enough that that uh, the equipment's not going to be damaged. Be huge, huge energy savings. That's that's just very low hanging fruit. So. The way data centers are going to be controlled could be changing. I tell you who I'd really love to get on the show to talk about this, and you better be listening, Rick Warner, the innovator. But as, as we know, Rick's, Rick Warner, our friend, the innovator, is a big uh, white space guy. Maybe we can get Rick on to discuss some of these trends. So, Rick, you well, I, I, I watched a very interesting thing on YouTube on data, DCIM, because quite frankly, I, I was definitely weak on it, and I heard it, but I never took it, you know, how is it going to affect what we do for a living and, and, and the customers that we work with, customer sets. But um, they look at uh, an analogy is that a data center is like a manufacturing center, and you have all the factors, uh, all the variables that go into the manufacturing, uh, which are cooling, uh, you know, the uh, hardware costs, software costs, these are all the flexible variables that go into the manufacturing. The obvious thing that you manufacture is the control, you generate data, and that's the product that comes out, you know, and uh, it was very interesting because it told you what the costs were approximately, you know, 80% of the uh, cost of the data center is the is the uh, the software programs and the oversight done by you know third parties, so they can control a lot of those costs on the on the input part of the manufacturing process or the data processing part, and that's where we're seeing this Niagara uh, effort being directed to because if you can lower those costs, you, you reduce the cost of manufacturing of that data, you produce better data at less cost. Guess what? The CTO and the CIO are saying right on, you know, and then the CFO is saying. We're, we're now more, uh, more, more, uh, you know, profitable. We're more efficient, and we can do more. We can increase our, our manufacturing capability. So, I mean, to, to hear this analogy was very important because it's all about controlling your costs and, and to be able to put that visibility. I saw some really neat stuff too. I saw some great dashboards. You talk about visibility. This is where the visual dashboard is so critical because with one glance, you can see through the color presentations what's going on, the flows. Uh, the thermal imaging that they put up there, uh, you know, your your, uh, you know, how much it's cost you per square foot. I mean, you can put a lot of information very comfortably into a screen now that really tells the story, and that's what we're seeing happen. It's cool stuff, Kenny Spires. Well, listen, I want you to survive to to do another show. I know you're with your family up there. In good. So I think this is probably a good place to call it. Uh, anything else you want to add before we sign off, Kenny? No, Eric, I, uh, I don't know what the, the background looks and everything. It's, it's like you, last week you did a great job of ad-libbing and, and innovating uh, based on where you were and the circumstances, and I think I got my round this week. So next week I'm looking forward to a better environment. And uh, Yeah, well, it'll be okay. We'll take a look at the tape here and see how it goes. Uh, we'll also have the podcast. So that's it. Another week on Control Talk Now, the Smart Buildings podcast and or video cast. So you can watch us or listen to us or do both. I'm Eric Stromquist. He's the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only Connecticut kid, Kenny Spires. So thanks for joining us. And remember, stay in control. Indeed, Eric. Indeed, Kenny Spires. <laughs>